Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com and in this week's Q&A, we're gonna learn how to extend the background of this photo. So we're gonna take it from this to this. And this is obviously a common problem. A friend of mine sent me this photograph a few days ago and I wanted to show her how she could correct it relatively quickly. So what we're gonna do is start by extending the background, not the floor. We're gonna start with the background and we're gonna do that first by duplicating our background layer. On the Mac, that's Command J and on the PC, that's Control J. We're gonna press M on our keyboard to grab the marquee tool and I'm looking at that tool just to make sure that I indeed have the rectangular marquee tool and not the oval and I'm gonna select the area just to the left of the hay bale and just below the trim and I'm going to click and drag up to the left once I've done that I'm gonna go to the edit menu and choose content aware scale now this makes me chuckle because you guys know that I'm really big into keyboard shortcuts but look at that shortcut it is literally every modifier key plus the letter C. So that is Option Shift Command C on the Mac, which is Alt Control Shift C on the PC. If you can remember that, great, but if not, it's under the edit menu. And when you do that, it turns your selection into Beezer handles, that's these little squares. So what I'm gonna do is click on the one on the middle left. I'm gonna click and drag to the left, just extending that background as much as I need it. When I reach the edge, I'm going to press enter or return on my keyboard to commit that change. And then I'm going to press command D on the Mac, that's control D on the PC to deselect. And that looks awesome. We're going to do the right area of the photograph and we're going to select just to the right of the pumpkin and just below the trim. I'm going to click and drag up, have that area. And I'm going to try to remember that keyboard shortcut. Okay, I'm on a Mac, so that is command, option, shift, See? Ah, oh, yes, okay. There is hope for that one. I am going to click on this right middle Beezer handle and drag all the way to the right, even taking that shadow beyond the edge. Um, that will just save me a step later. And I'm gonna press enter or return to commit that change. And then Command D on the Mac, that's Control D on the PC, to deselect. And if I look at my before, and after, wow, that was pretty easy and it looks pretty good. I notice some shadow variations, but we'll take care of that in a minute. Um, the way that I work in Photoshop, when I've completed one particular change, I like to merge down to the background. So I, I kind of take it sort of one area at a time. And in order to do that, on the PC, it's Control Shift E and on the Mac, it's Command Shift E and that will flatten those layers. Okay, so let's start to work on this floor. It's gonna take a few more steps, but they're not difficult. I'm gonna start again with my marquee tool, and I'm going to click and drag and select this area right about there, and then I am going to place my mouse inside of that selection, and if you're on a PC, you can right click, or on the Mac, you can press Control and then click, and you can layer via copy. So what I've done is just sort of place this wood floor on its own layer, there it is. I'm gonna take that layer and move it over to the left and then place it. So V on my keyboard will give me the Move tool, and then I can just sort of click and drag this to the right. Okay, I'm, there are gonna be issues that we're gonna need to correct, but I'm just gonna drop it right there. So obviously we have a bit of a perspective problem. That is the wood boards are, are too straight. You know, they need to sort of go out in an angle. So what we can do is go to the edit menu again, under transform, we're gonna select skew. And when we do that, we get more Beezer handles. I love that, Beezer handles. And I'm gonna click and drag these handles until I sort of get the angle that I'm looking for so that it looks, it, so that it gives you the right perspective, right? So I'm gonna click and drag these and I'm just gonna experiment until I get the right angle for these boards. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter or return to commit that. And I'm gonna look at my before and after. Okay, the angle looks good, but I obviously have some areas that I need to clean up. So what I'm gonna do is add a layer mask. I'm gonna to come to the bottom of my layers palette and click this little button that says add layer mask. And remember with layer masks, white reveals, black conceals. So I want to conceal sort of this area that came over. So I wanna paint with a black 
brush. So be on my keyboard to get my brush. But I noticed in the bottom left of my tools that I have white as my foreground and black is my back, background, excuse me. So I just need to switch that by pressing X on my keyboard. And now when I paint with black, I can conceal or hide that area that I don't wish to see. Okay, so another neat trick, let me zoom in. That's Command Plus on the Mac, Control Plus on the PC. I'm gonna hold down my space bar so that I can pan over. Oh, and I see some areas right there that I might wanna work on. So what I wanna do is I wanna get this trim kind of straight across here. So if I put my mouse right about here, and you know what? I know that I want this edge to be a little bit harder. I don't want too much of a feather. And I can see that I have a feather because I'm looking up in my tool options bar and I can just tell that that brush has a feather. So what I'm gonna do is hold down shift on my keyboard and press my right bracket key a couple of times to give this brush a slightly harder edge. And then when I click here, I'm gonna hold down shift and drag to the left. So what happens is it constrains it. So you can just go and you have that trim. Uh, this area is not quite where I want it. So I'm gonna click and drag over again until I sort of get, let's see, and then I go too far, but that's okay. I can press X on my keyboard to just click and bring that back. I can press X again. So what I'm doing is just sort of touching up these edges a little bit until I get that edge looking how I want it. And that actually looks pretty good. So another area that I noticed has some issues. Uh, it, there's this line right here and then there's the line of the other board. So we need to clean that up a little bit and we can use our mask still to accomplish that. So I'm gonna paint with a black brush. Okay, and then I see what's happening. I am concealing layer one, but as I do that, I reveal the background and that's where you're seeing that extra line. So I'm gonna press X on my keyboard to get my white brush again, and I'm gonna click and drag up to kind of go over that line, but then I see it right there and I'm really not digging that. What if I pressed X on my keyboard again and then, I mean, obviously these boards are not gonna line up perfectly uh, because of the way we skewed them, but I don't like this line, so I'm gonna press X again. And whenever I'm using my mask, I'm always, I always have my finger on X key, so I'm sort of switching back and forth between my white brush and my black brush to reveal or conceal whatever it is I wanna see. Okay, so I'm okay with that board being a little bit wider, but I am not okay with this, this kind of hard line right here. So. I am, and if I press X, I revealed that again. What I'm gonna do is soften the edge of my brush, and I'm gonna do that by pressing Shift on my keyboard and the left bracket key, and I'm just gonna kind of brush along here and see if I can't sort of blend that in using my mask tool, and that does look much better, although I started to see this line here, so I'm gonna press X again and go over it and just make sure you know, sometimes you, you start to <laughs> maybe go cross-eyed or you're just looking too close at it. I'm going to do a command minus to back up a little bit. And I'm going to look at my before and after. And that actually looks pretty good. I know that that board is wider than the rest, but I've got to be honest. That doesn't trouble me too much because um, when you have a child or two on this hay bale, your eyes are not going to be measuring the floorboards, okay? So maybe you need to stop being a pixel peeper. <laughs> There's this thing called the minimum effective dose, and you're kind of like, how much work is worth cleaning this floor up? Um, I am a perfectionist, and I do think details matter, but at some point you have to say, okay, that looks pretty good from a distance, and I'm not, I'm not going to analyze it or overanalyze it. So I'm actually pretty happy with the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is flatten this again. Remember that's Command-Shift-E on the Mac, Control-Shift-E on the PC. I'm gonna press my Marquee tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this wood that I fixed to place on the other side. So I'm gonna click and drag, put my mouse inside, Control or right click to layer via copy, via my keyboard to get my Move tool. I'm gonna click and drag it over. Obviously, it is going the wrong direction, but that's easy to fix. We can go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Now it's going the right direction, but it still has a bit of a perspective issue. So we'll go to Edit, Transform, Skew, and we can fix that pretty easily. 
by just pulling on our beezer handles until we get the right sort of angle for those boards. And um, I'm looking, you know, at all of the other lines and I'm just trying to make sure that they're parallel, but giving me the right perspective. Okay, so I noticed that this trim isn't going to line up. I can see that right here, but that's okay. I'm actually going to use my free transform tool to make this wood uh, piece <laughs> a little bit bigger. So I'm going to press enter return to commit that change. And before I start using my masking technique to sort of blend this in, I'm going to press command T on the Mac. That's control T on the PC. And I'm going to go to this sort of corner edge beezer handle and I'm going to click and drag up and to the right. And so you can see what's happening. I'm making the piece a little bit bigger and I'm, I'm looking at that trim. I don't want to actually line it up perfectly, but I want to get kind of close. And I'm going to press enter or return. And I might actually nudge that with um, V on my keyboard to make sure I have the move tool and then just using my arrow keys to nudge it up or down or sort of to place it where you'd like it. At this point, let's add a mask by clicking the mask button at the bottom of the layers palette. B on our keyboard to make sure we have our brush. I want to make sure that I have a black brush. So I'm going to press X to switch those swatches. <laughs> Boy, that's a mouthful. Let's say to flip those swatches. That's a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to brush right here. I'm going to brush up here. I'm going to start to blend this in. Blend that trim. Oh, I can see where it's disappearing, so I've gone a little too far. X on my keyboard. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller with my left bracket, and I'm actually going to give it a slightly harder edge with a shift right bracket just once. And I'm going to blend that right there. That's looking pretty good. Let's zoom in with a Command Plus or Control Plus. Space bar to get my pan tool. Bring this over. Well, we have a little bit of variation there that we need to work on. So let's make our brush smaller with our left bracket key. And I can blend that in. And I see a little bit of an issue right here. I saw that issue on the other side as well. But I noticed that when I zoomed out, it, it wasn't as noticeable. So again, I didn't, I didn't get over ridiculous about it. I'm just going to blend this in. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to turn this layer on and off to see how that's looking. Oh, I noticed that trim sort of going up. So let's do a command plus space bar to get our pan tool. Let's go over here. And uh, now I can see that edge a little bit more. I'm going to hold down shift and click and drag. And there that's gone. It does have a little bit of variation in the light. Um, but again, that doesn't really trouble me too much. Let's zoom out. I'm going to turn that on and off again. And you know what? I do want, I do want to extend that trim a little bit. So let's do a command plus to zoom in, space bar. And let's make sure we have the right brush we do. That's a black brush. So I'm just going to run it across the top of that trim sort of to smooth out that edge so it looks a little better. Yes, I like that. Before and after. Bring that down a little bit. Looks pretty good. You can take this as far as you'd like. If you would like to sit there and mask or even turn on your clone tool to blend it in a little bit more, have at it. <laughs> I don't know that it's worth it to do all of that. So I'm, I'm really happy with how this is coming along. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that with a command shifty. Remember that's control shifty on the PC. And then what I'm going to do is sort of just um, work on these shadow areas a little bit. I am going to... I was going to duplicate my background layer. That's what I started to say. But you know what? I can do this on a blank layer. So that saves pixels. Let's do um, a new blank layer. And you can do that on your keyboard with Command, Option, Shift, N. That's Control, Alt, Shift, N on the PC. That's the way to add a new layer without any questions. Um, because if you do not press Option or Alt in that keyboard shortcut, you'll get a box that asks you to name the layer, which is fine. I enjoy naming layers, but sometimes I just don't have time for questions. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit with a command plus. And what I want to do is sort of just smooth out this background a little bit. So what I'm going to do is hold down alter option on my keyboard and I'm going to select a color sort of in this area. Oh, I'm on layer one. Let me click the background layer, pressing alt or option. I'm going to click maybe right about here. I'm going to go back to layer one. 
Make sure I have my brush tool, be on my keyboard. I am going to bring down the flow of this brush way down, maybe around 14% so that I can build up this change. I'm gonna use my right bracket key to make the brush larger. I'm just gonna to start to really lightly brush. And if you have a Wacom tablet, you can use pressure sensitivity. Instead of pulling down on your flow, you could just brush lighter with your stylus. I'm gonna do a little bit over here as well. A little bit here. I don't mind that there's a little bit of shadow um, to the left of the hay bale and on, on the left. Uh, I, I can see that the photographer, the light source, the main light source was camera right. And that's okay. I like sort of highlights to dark. So I don't want my light to be completely flat. So I'm going to leave a little bit of that variation there. I'm just going to look at that before and after. Add a little bit right there. I think that looks great. I'm going to do a command shift E, a control shift E, and you can jump over to your history, create a snapshot, and let's look at the before and the after. I hope you found that useful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.